to another Lessons from the Real World webinar. I'm Jesse Burst. I'm the founder and the chief analyst at Smart Grid News, the Internet's oldest and largest smart grid site. I'll be your moderator and host today. And we're going to continue our discussion of how to be scientific about customer engagement, how to apply behavioral science to customer engagement. We had a previous installment in which we focused primarily on paper reports. Uh, and today we're going to apply some of these techniques, understand how to apply these techniques to online interactions. That's going to be a fascinating topic. Why and how to get your customers interacting with you online, but also with each other. And today's presenters, I'm Jesse Burst again, your moderator. Also with us is Gail Allen. She's Senior Manager of Customer Solutions at Kansas City Power and Light. Gail, thanks for joining us. Thank you. And also Dr. Paul Cole, the VP of Consumer Products at Tendril. Uh, Paul, thanks for coming along. Sure, Jesse. Pleased to be here. Oh, and by the way, that previous webinar included uh, folks from Smart Grid Consumer Collaborative and from uh, Duke Energy. So if you didn't get a chance to see it, watch for that link. I think it's uh, well worth your time. And so here's what we're going to do. We're going to start out with the Kansas City Power and Light story. First, you know, what's the, an overview of their goals and objectives? and then some of the specifics of how they rolled their program out and finish up with some lessons learned. And then that's going to be followed by uh, Dr. Cole from Tendril, who's going to talk about this framework for persistent customer engagement. And that persistent word is so important, I think, in this dialogue about you know how we not just engage customers, but keep them engaged. And then some of the concepts behind this interaction idea. And then we'll finish up with some actual uh, hard numbers and results, the kinds of things that you can expect uh, should you go down this path yourself. So let's uh, bring up Gail Allen. She's a senior manager for customer solutions at uh, KCPNL. She's for the last couple of years been managing the project manager for this customer end use uh, portion of that project. She used to run the end-to-end uh, -end account management for some of their tier one commercial and industrial customers, so that's a very demanding customer set. She's got uh, over 20 years of an IT background as well as an MBA and a Six Sigma Master Black Belt. So Gail, we're grateful you're bringing all those credentials here and share some of your experiences. Thank you very much. Thank you. Over to you, Gail. Hi. Kansas City Power and Light, located in the Midwest, a small utility in the Midwest. I'm sure I'm going to uh, show you on the next slide what's going on there. But what we're doing with the Smart Grid area is a DOE demonstration grant, which is providing half the funding for a small pilot project that's located in Kansas City, Missouri. Kansas City Power and Light is an investor-owned utility. We cover two states, Kansas and Missouri, with most of our customers in Missouri. We have a large, concentrated urban group of of customers and industrial customers, as well as rural customers in southern and northern and middle Missouri. We have our own generation, transmission distribution, and own the customers. Our Smart Grid Demonstration Grant is unique in the grants that the government has funded because we're doing it all. We're doing it all, meaning end-to-end. -end. We're doing smart generation, battery storage, one megawatt battery storage at our substation, smart distribution, distribution automation, which is going to include auto DR, demand response events generated right from our uh, distribution system. And then we're doing AMI meters, uh, Landis and Gear meter mesh network, and then smart consumption, which means we're everything inside the customer's home. We are we're testing and doing it all. And the thing about our demonstration grant is to demonstrate the interoperability of all of these tools and make sure that we have the most current and up-to-date standards. So we work very closely with our with our uh, vendors, which we call our business partners, to ensure that they're adopting and ratifying the most current industry standards. And that would be with, as I mentioned, open ADR, but also with any kind of, you know, Zigbee enabled tool. Our vendor that we're working with, the supplier that we're working with, is Tendril, and that's where Paul Cole works with them. And we've got a very strong partnership with them that uh, we're implementing the tools. And I think I'm going to talk to you about that a little bit later on. But I think what makes this whole project unique, again, is just the everything all together and testing the interoperability with the newer standards. 
as I said, the project itself has um, objectives. The project itself has objectives like end-to-end um, -end smart grid, as I said, new technologies, best-in-class approach to this technology adoption. And what makes it also unique is this targeted urban revitalization that's happening. We believe that one of the reasons we received our smart grid demonstration grant was because our U.S. congressman went to uh, Washington, D.C. and got a lot of stimulus grant funding for this area called the Green Impact Zone in Kansas City. Our next slide shows you boundaries of the Green Impact Zone. And what this U.S. congressman is trying to do is show that we can revitalize an underserved area of Kansas City by helping with the stimulus grant funds. One of the reasons it's underserved is, uh, is simply because of, you know, just a lot of urban dwellers have left and gone to the suburbs. It's, you know, the same thing that's happening in a lot of the cities across the nation. But also smart planning put a nice highway right down through the smack dab through the middle of the Green Impact Zone. And and as you can imagine, when you put a highway through an area, you get abandonment along the highway. And then when you get abandonment, you get crime. And so um, sometimes that's some of the issues that they're facing in this green impact zone. And so Congressman Cleaver got a lot of uh, grant funds, and I list that here on the page. Also important to note, though, that beyond our green impact zone, this blue area, which we creatively called the blue zone. Um, it extends beyond this green impact zone because we wanted to test additional demographics, not just the demographics and the customers in the green impact zone, but we are picking up um, some large commercial customers, the University of Missouri at Kansas City, and just to some different demographics of customers in that blue area. So our project timeline is a five-year timeline. We're right smack dab in that yellow portion that I show here. If I actually had to uh, change this slide because this was developed at the beginning, I would like to run that yellow out a little bit further because we'll be doing a lot of that stuff in 2013. And of course, through 2013 and 2014, we'll have the evaluation portion of it. OK, goals and objectives. You know, I, I've talked to you about the demonstration stimulus, uh, you know, taking this interoperability. So. Whenever I show this slide, I, I laugh and I tell people, I said, if uh, you were an engineer, you'd probably tell somebody there's a lot of different goals in this project, and you might not talk about the customer focus goals first. But my role in ensuring that the customers are receiving the tools inside the house, anything beyond the meter, and the education and outreach component of it, uh, of course, I have to say that I have a different set of goals, and that's to you know provide sustainable energy savings. After all, we are offering DSM programs that are uh, centered on demand response with our with our tools and energy management and trying to make sure that our customers do achieve energy savings. We also, the goals of this project is, you know, um, like it's, you can see the technologies, interoperabilities, but it's also a lot about community relations and a lot about, you know, face-to-face -face working with our customers and using a non-traditional approach with getting customers enrolled in our programs. And then what Paul will tell you, a non-traditional approach for the utilities is to continue furthering customer engagement. So um, I think those are really generally different today than how we used to do. I mean, we have a lot of DSM programs. KCPNL does, but a lot of times we get customers to enroll, and then that's it. We, you know, we usually stop there. And what this project is different is the try to advance their engagement further after they enroll in our programs. So that just takes us right on up to, to explain about this, that you know, we believe we know it's moving a customer up a curve to just not being aware and knowing about a program, maybe enrolling in a web portal and, and participating in the program. But we really want to move those people into being frequent users of that program. And hopefully advocates of the program to be able to promote it to other people. And Paul will talk to you about some of the techniques that they'll use at, at Tendril to create frequent users. And we're excited, again, about just a different way to do that. And quite frankly, even this customer experience that I talk about, moving them up the curve, we actually have goals that are not only a goal, as any program would, for customer enrollment and how many people will participate in the program, but we also have specific goals on how many people will be frequent users of that program and advocates as well. 
So some of the products that we're offering are sweet to all customers in the Smart Grid Demonstration Grant, which includes the green area as well as the blue area, is My Smart Portal. We branded it as My Smart Portal. It's Tendril's Energized Platform Portal. You know, Paul will talk a lot about some of the capabilities of this, but it's just very, I mean, KCPNL has a, a web interface tool with our customers, as most utilities do, and where customers can enroll in things like paperless billing and budget billing and and other programs, other DSM programs that we offer. But this portal, it goes a little bit further in how it presents information in a friendly way and how it engages our customers. So we're, we're real excited and happy about that. You know, one of our biggest challenges of this product is that we have you know, about 10,000 customers in that area, but only about 8,000 are residential. And of that 8,000, we're only projecting about 50% of them to have internet access. So um, it becomes a challenge to try to get uh, reach our project goal, because that, you know, you do the math, you end up thinking about almost half the customers we need them to engage in this energy management portal. And we think that the other option that for, for those that don't have the internet is the MySmart display. It's tendrils display that does reading real-time information from the AMI meter and I think one of the best tools about that is a it does not need the internet and B I like it that it shows you how much energy you're using today that's that little bar graph that you'll see on the right and most folks don't know how much it costs for them to run their home every day for energy I think that's a nice strong tool and then the next best tool on the display is the fact that it will give a customer an estimated bill which is again very strong for customers that are especially living in a budget. The other thing that we're offering is the MySmart thermostat. It's Tendril's thermostat that, um, you know, just it's like every other demand response thermostat that's out there, you know, pretty, pretty interesting just with any other thermostat. But what's making our project a little bit more unique is that the thermostat, the MySmart thermostat, we're putting 1,600 of them out there, and those are going to communicate directly to the meter. And that's kind of like what I told you about the open ADR, the demand response, being able to receive messages from the meter. And that's new technology that we're doing with this thermostat. And then that thermostat is also the cornerstone tool that will be used in the MySmart Home, Tendril's home area network. The home area network it comprises of a thermostat. Customers will receive two volt switches, which are just plug in to your normal home outlet and be able to do demand response off of those volt switches, as well as being able to present itself through the energy management portal, the MySmart portal, and be able to present that tool, the volts, and the thermostats, and be able to disaggregate energy usage off those volt switches. So it's kind of, if you guys are aware of what a home area network does, it you're able to issue demand response events through those volt switches. You're able to see the energy usage on the energy management portal. And also, a customer can turn those switches off and on remotely by using their portal. So we're very excited about being able to offer the My Smart Home, Tendril's home area network, to our customers. We have 400 of them to offer to the customers, those 10,000 customers in that area. And to date, we've got about 11 people on, uh, that have signed up to the, for the home area network. Time of use rates, we are offering time of use rates. I mean, a lot of utilities are doing that. The, the thing about the time of use, our company is that there, it's a very simple time of use. I know there are a lot of other dynamic pricing programs out there in the industry. However, we were challenged by being able to offer different TOU rates for our customers simply because this is a small pilot. And, you know, we didn't want to make big changes to our billing system to do any other kind of dynamic pricing. So uh, we're happy to say that we just started. We just sent out the mailing to 1,000 customers a week ago, and voila, within one day we had two people sign up. So this is fresh, hot off the press of uh, people engaging in our time of use rate. Our time of use rate is basically a six times differential. Generally, our energy price is a, in the summertime is 11 cents per kilowatt hour, and we're offering during the time for this time of use program, we're offering a six cent off peak for 20 hours of a day and up to 38 cents, it's like 37 point blah, 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 cents uh, for four hours of the day from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. in the afternoon. Uh, this program's running from May 16th to September 15th. So um, we're, we're really excited to see what kind of participation we get this summer and, of course, next summer on this, uh, on this, on this product and really 
all the other products. And it kind of goes back to when I was telling you about that yellow, our timeline, our yellow. We don't believe we'll get this kind of customer participation that I show you on this page this year. And we'll end up doing a lot of the um, marketing, outreach, education to our customers next year to get them to enroll in these programs as well.